On this week's episode of An Echo of Glory, we talked about that win against Everton, gave some much-needed love to Sonny, and looked ahead to Newcastle at the weekend. Welcome to another episode of An Echo of Glory. Joining me, it's the old band back together, Jake Robson. Hello. I'm not that old. <laughs> and Gary Diamond. I am that Who old. Who is that old? <laughs> How are you? I'm all right, thank you. How are you? Good. Good holiday? Yeah, very nice. Thank you. Good. We've done Jake's holiday. I don't need to ask him. <laughs> he's, he's looking very tanned. Not as tanned as James, the producer. Though. James, yeah. But he does a sunbed before he, he does goes. <laughs> he's got creams. <laughs> <laughs> okay. What were you up to last night then, Johnny? Why, do I look a bit tired? Yeah. Yeah, I was playing poker till late and it went on and on and on. And then I ended up getting knocked out, not winning any money. How bloke, late? It was like half one, two, and the bloke needed... What happened? I had ace 10. He had pocket 10s. Mm. I went all in, so he needed a 10. Ace came down. He needed the case 10, and he hit it. Oh. Yeah, Spursy, huh? It's that Spursy. And he's a gooner as well. Oh. Yeah. I'd, I'd have been all right after that. Till 2 a.m., you won no money. About quarter to two. Oh. Good times, though. Good times. Late night. <laughs> Poker session in the CD back in Radlett. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Listen, I also want to ask you something. Uh, Jake Sanders, one of our regulars, uh, was here. Jake too. Who's here last week? Jake too. <laughs> well, I don't know. This is the thing. Is he Jake? He interviewed. He was at Spurs interviewing Ange this week for his job. And I was thinking that's what you were supposed to be doing for us. <laughs> was I? Where were you? Uh, probably in the canteen finishing all the food. <laughs> 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 it's a very good one at Tottenham. All right. So you were there, but you missed it. All right. <laughs> Um, okay, let's go straight in with some club news. The 21s, fresh off the back of a big win against Chelsea, lost 1-0 at home to Newcastle. But we know that's a, a whole new team, so there's going to be peaks and troughs. You see they're wearing a gold Premier League badge because they won the title. No, I haven't actually seen that. Yeah. Which, uh, that's nice, isn't, isn't it? it? That is nice. Maybe one day. <laughs> maybe, maybe, they can, maybe they can point it out to Vardy. <laughs> By the way, uh, we've won more titles than Leicester. Mm. Also, I'm going to say it and I might get in trouble and I have pointed this out. The Premier League were trolling Spurs on, on their Twitter account with that mm. this last couple of weeks. When was when was that a thing? Why are Spurs always the ones getting trolled? I, I, I've, I've said this and I know the reason for it and it's very clear. What, what upsets me more than anything is when Spurs fans like put oxygen into that into that thing and, and, and go, oh, we aren't winning trophies, right? Number one, I think we're the sixth most successful club in England over the course of history. Only since Chelsea and City started perverting the game has that changed. But the reason that we are the club that is consistently picked out as Spurs aren't won trophies is because we're the only club that is consistently challenging the elite and looking to get in. And because we're the only club that has the ambition to try to go on to win trophies. And OK, we're falling short, but is that not better than being Everton, Newcastle, Villa, Well, Villa, until, Villa until now, yeah, but Villa they've been doing it like a and week down, and a half. And down, yeah. yeah, exactly. Up and down. And if they're still there in five years Fine. and they haven't won a trophy, then maybe they maybe it'll cut, start, people start having a Man, dig at them. just won't know. But, but it's Tottenham because we are the club that is trying to do it and is falling short. And, people, and, and, and for some reason, that's a bad thing. In, 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 whereas people should be heralding Tottenham and saying, go and do it, yeah, break yeah. into it, break the monopoly. 85% of domestic trophies since 2000 have been won by five clubs. You love that stat. It's true though. Yeah, yeah. It's true. So, it, you know. It, does it keep getting more true every year? Surely. Yes, the, surely it, does. it gets more and more true. It climbs so then up. it must be higher. Who won the league last year? No, no, but as in. Yeah, it yeah, it, it, it probably is now higher. I haven't done it in. Right, like, but, that's what but I mean. It's probably 86% <laughs> <percent laughs> now. No, it's probably 86% <laughs> right, now. Okay. You know, um, but that's yeah. why. It's because it's because yeah. we're the club that dares to try to do. Yeah, and we're oh, falling short. See what you did there. That's the point, isn't it? We are daring to try to do and we're falling short. And for that, we're getting stick. Give Everton stick. They're a shambles we'll come to that <laughs> right Newcastle where have they been big club Leeds big club Sheffield Wednesday big club loads of big clubs Villa big club I dispute the Newcastle big club thing by the way just because you've got they, they, they a like big to, stadium they, and shout they, loud they like to think of themselves as a big club mm. other people go best fans in the world big club so if, if they're going to get that label then act like it right but w sorry this is a topic that really grates me because Spurs fans go oh <laughs> I saw it on Twitter this week Spurs fans saying oh you know they're mocking us and we deserve it no we don't what about every other club that doesn't win? Mm -hmm. At least we're trying. Anyway. I agree with you. I we've, rarely we've say that. We've gone straight in on a bank holiday. So the under-18s right. on oh, fire. It really, really, <laughs> really vexes me. That and Jamie Vardy really vexes yeah, me. Yeah, yeah. Listen, I agree. That annoyed me this week. Uh, maybe we'll do that. 
Things that have annoyed Johnny and Gary this week. That'll be a pod on its own. No, that'll yes. be hours, hours <laughs> long. Hours James, long. have you got a four-hour session Years. this week? Uh, he's not there. Uh, <laughs> the 18s won 5-1 at Fulham on the back of a 6-4 win against Palace. So they are on flames, as the kids say. Any other club news I've written here? Any other club news? Solomon to Leeds. Solomon to Leeds, yeah. And Phillips, Phillips to Stoke. Stoke. Also a good loan. Okay. Two good loans. Okay. Yeah. That's the club news done? That's the club news. Right. Everton. I'll admit, I thought I, I had the wobbles last week after we played Leicester, but deep you, down... You, you owe Spurs an apology. It's funny you should say that, because I felt like the performance from Spurs was an apology for the Leicester game, but we'll come to that. I, I don't know what we've learned. But the, the line-up, when it came through, very attacking. I will go through it. Um, don't have my laptop with me, but should be easy enough to remember. Vicario in goal, back four picked itself, Porro... Romero, Van der Ven, Udogi, and he sort of got, it's like a 4-1-4-1, would you say? <coughs> Basuma yeah. in front, Johnson right, Madison and Kulisevsky, Son on the left, and uh, I've gone completely. It wasn't Son on it the left. It was Odebear. No, Odebear, Odebear and Son through the middle. Odebear on the, on the an left and, and Son up. up front. It was an interesting line. You wanted Odebear to start, and there had been talk, Gary, you wanted Odebear to start, and there had been talk it was going to happen. Great. More than happy to see that. Um, was very attacking, though. Yeah, I was a bit surprised. I, I thought it would be that lineup with Kulisevsky on the right, Johnson not in, and either Saar or uh, Bergvall um, in the middle. But I was happy to see it, and it worked yeah. really well. I don't know was Basuma in because Ben Zaku was out? or was, would we're, 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 We'll never really know. No. Um, we'll never really know, and, and at this point it's not important because Basuma's come back and really took his opportunity and mm. put in the the type of performance we saw in the first 10 games of last season yeah, rather than what we saw after that. Um, I found Andrew's comments about him very interesting. And either it is really good man management where you know your player or or it's slightly risky. He basically called him a child this week and said, you know, Basuma is like telling off a child. They will be excellent for the next two days and then they'll revert. I was thinking to myself, either you know that Basuma is going to take that as it, 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 in, in a it. good way, yeah. But there is well, surely there, there could have been the risk that Basuma goes. I'm not having that. Do you know well, I mean? then then he's thrown well, then, well, he's yeah, thrown it out there yeah. to Basuma. Yeah, yeah. But the thing is, I think uh, it's been said since he arrived that his man management is very very good. So he must. I mean, he's known yeah. him for a year now. He must know what he's dealing. He's with. probably said it to Basuma. Absolutely, oh, for sure. I don't yeah. think he's yeah gone behind his back and <laughs> Basuma's gone. Where's he got that from? I'd yeah. be very surprised. But it, it was it was an attacking lineup. I don't imagine there will be many teams he goes that attacking against. Yeah. So I wonder if it was a bit of disrespect to Everton in some ways. Last week, I did say that uh, if he wasn't going to pick Basuma, because we thought maybe Basuma would still be on the naughty step, I did suggest that he could patent... This would be one of the games where you, if he picked Gray instead of, uh, in the six, maybe not as defensive, but it's one of the games where you could, you could get away with it. Okay, he picked Basuma. But with the two, I think Everton at home, two attacking more eights rather than a sort of two sixes and one eight. I think I think that's what, I mean, there aren't many other games in the Premier League you would say that you, that's that would be likely to happen. Oh, Everton I, at home. We, we could play that against a lot of teams at home. Yeah. Well, there's no reason why we couldn't. We are better than most of the teams in the league. And if and what I liked about it, Andrew's philosophy is, of, of defence is essentially keep the ball up yeah. front and when yeah. you lose it, win it back very bloody yeah. quick. City right? do, that's what City do. And the problem that we've had is when you've got Son on the left wing, Johnson on the right, and Saar in the middle, you've got three players there who aren't ball retainers. You know, that uh, people say what they like about Son. He, I, I sort of, Son's on the edge of this more than Johnson and Saar. Saar is not a ball player. So when you've got Saar in the middle, it makes it so much easier for teams to press on to James Madison, for example, because Saar's not really going to hurt you probably. And you're also not going to retain possession in that way. So what we saw, I think it was 70% possession or something like that we had against Everton. And a lot of that was in their half, just keeping the ball with yeah. players that, that you trust on the ball and you're not going to get them off it. Yeah. So against lesser teams at home, mm. why should we not play that? Against yeah. Newcastle away, I'd probably put my pants if he played that. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> he's not doing that. Yeah. I also he's think uh, it would have been interesting had Solanke been fit. Surely Odebear's not starting. No. No. No, Son would have played on the left and so, Solanke yeah. would have played so down the middle. But that's that's football, right? That's, that's the game. 
We'll come I think I, I've said this so many times now. I think <laughs> You're bringing a proper football man. <laughs> I think we've seen the end of Kulisevsky as a first choice winger. And just, yeah. and just picking him through the middle. And look how, I mean, he looked good. Yeah. As you said, he's, he's good on the ball. I think that's his best, that inside right, not out on the right. When he, yeah. when he was linking up sort of in between the corner of the penalty area and the D, that sort of right-hand yeah. channel. He did well at Leicester as well. He did a lot of that in the last 10 he minutes. He did a lot of that when uh, Madison was injured last season because he's really good on the half turn, picking mm. the ball up, finding little pockets. What he's not so good at, I don't think, is actually crossing and beating players around the outside. But when he gets on the ball in those areas, I think his vision, his sort of quick feet vision is really good. One touch passing we saw for the first goal. So what position is that? All, all the new numbers we get, well, sixes, eights? I, well, it... I think him and Madison are basically, for me, that's two eights with a six behind or two tens or whatever. Or, or is Madison the 10 and Kulisevsky the eight with a six? I don't know. But, well, he, like, but he's was, more advanced than a six. It basically. was two tens, really. Two tens Madison. and a six. Is that what you call it? Yeah, there was yeah. no eight. Whereas before you'd say we were playing, what, a six and eight and a 10 or two sixes and a 10? Something like that. Probably a six and eight and a 10. Six and eight it and was a 10. trying to, it just wasn't really working. Yeah. That's my opinion. But I think against, I think, you know, as you said, Gary, <laughs> City do it, and I think if we have aspirations, well, we certainly have aspirations to play in a similar way, press high, um, keep the ball high up the pitch. I think games like Everton at home, and a lot of games at home, I think we can do it. I yeah. wouldn't want, yeah, as you said. And, and it's interesting because you see um, the goal that Ipswich scored against City. Yeah. If Spurs concede that goal, everybody goes, oh, it's the same goal that Tottenham would concede. That Ipswich caught them on a break. It was down the flanks, ball into the middle, yeah. Giz has gone through, in behind the City defence, the City yeah. high line, right? City concede that goal, it's fine. Spurs concede that goal, and oh, this is a weakness that Tottenham have got. Yes. But the whole point is that it's come from exactly as you say, the way that City want to play, and the way they defend is by keeping the ball and winning it very quickly. And when that doesn't happen, then you can break on them, as Ipswich showed. Ipswich. Mm. So yeah. it can happen to City. This is where we are trying to go. So, you know, you're going to have some pain along the way. But City have Rodri. You know. Well, they don't at the moment. They and also, that's why they can see that goal. And... Right, exactly. Yeah, always, yeah but there's always going to be... There's always going to be a downside to any exactly. system Exactly, there's play. always going to be a hole. You want to be super defensive, perfect. you don't score any goals. You're yeah. going to play high at the pitch, you can yeah. be hit on the break. Exactly, you're always going to... You're always going to give something up somewhere. Um, you say City have got Rodri, we've got our own... Yeah, you know, I, I think it was Jake Sanders again came up with a brilliant thing, and I noticed it in the stadium as well. You know, when, when teams do start breaking on us and they pump the ball down the, down the flanks and you see Mickey getting after it, the whole crowd just sort of giggles and goes, yeah, yeah. <laughs> 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 silly. That was silly, wasn't it? You know, and it is a cheat there code. Was so a we have... You're so right, Jake made a great point. There was yeah. a moment in the second half where they broke on us and Calvert-Lewin, whoever it was, looked up and saw Calvert-Lewin away and I thought, oh, they're in. Oh, no. They, I, know. Know, I yeah, forgot the we had ground Mickey. just relaxes. You're like, <laughs> that, that's not going to work. <laughs> you know, like, um, it's incredible. Yeah. Incredible to watch. Just want to get your thoughts before we quickly go into the game. On Odebear, I thought personally he started really well. I love to see a player take on his man, which we know Johnson refuses to do. I thought he faded in the second half, but as Andy said, debut, been with us a week, 60,000 people. There's definitely something there. I have to say that the Everton right back on debut, was it Romeo Dixon? Is that his Romeo? Is that his name? Yeah. Something Dixon. Played really well. Uh, listen, if he'd been up against Bell on Saturday, he probably wouldn't have had such a game, but. I like what I saw. I'm not going to get do you know watch compilations of his performance, but I thought he there's something there. Definitely something there. I think Ange said it before the Leicester game that he, he I said last week. He said, yeah, because we just signed him. He said he's going to turn out. He's going to be a great, mm. great player for us. I think it's telling that he was given the nod over Werner. Werner. Um, so I think that says that, that obviously tells you what Ange thinks about him. Werner's a Europa League player, isn't he? May, now? Maybe, but uh, not a bad option actually to have in the of Europa course. League. But Ange has obviously seen enough already in the videos he saw before we signed him and then in training to go, actually, this guy's good enough to start. Mm. Which means everyone was complaining about signing a player from Burnley for how much did we pay? 30 million. 30 25, 25 plus 25. 25. There are good players out there. Of course there are. If you're going to trust the manager, you've got to, you know, you've got to just go with it. And and the guy the guy looks all right. And the data was behind it as well. What I like about him is he, he is different to the other wingers that we've got who are all very direct, yeah. want the ball in behind. And you can't build up through these players. I think that's, that's what I was trying to say. I don't think you can build up so well through Son and Johnson, right? You've got to get them into positions where they can be dangerous. But with a player like Odebert, you can build up through him. He can take the ball in front of a man. 
and and retain it and you can trust him but you can also beat the man right and i think the most devastating thing in football you can have all the lovely passing you want the thing that kills a team is a player going past a man yeah. in, in 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 the opposition half right Correct. that's the thing that kills a team most yep. because that throws the shape creates space and you know something for years this is, they're different players this is why i liked ericsson I had a slight issue with him because he, he com didn't compared him to Modric who would go mm. past someone. Yeah. Ericsson didn't have the legs or the pace to go well, past someone. I think Modric someone. and Ericsson are fundamentally different players, but you're right. Modric could take the ball past someone. This is why I think Basuma actually should be an eight, not a six. Because he has that because ability Because Basuma to... can really go past players in the opposition half, yeah. right? And, and then play the intricate passing. Yeah. I think Basuma would be devastating in, in, in the eight, much more so than the six. But that's what Odebert gives us. He's got a bit of, I think, like the sort of Stefan Dalmat about him, if you remember <laughs> him, guy. right? But he <laughs> has. He's got, huh? Is that a good thing? He had a great but game against Dalmat Wolves Dalmat was <laughs> a wonderfully gifted footballer. Yeah, but just oh, didn't care. He was like, the streets don't, uh, well, is it, they say the streets don't remember or something. Yeah, I don't know. But, but, but he was like, he was so good on the ball. And, and, and Odebert's a young kid, but he's got that about him where you can take the ball, lovely first touch, close control, can beat a man. And he gives us something very, very different. So I, I do... I, I liked him a lot. I'm not going to sit here and say he's going to be a world beat or anything like that, but we were looking for a Neto, for example, for that exact reason. He can take the ball, you can build up through him, and he can also beat a man. Odebert can take the ball and he can beat a man. So actually, the Very signing of it. Werner is looking increasingly I prefer, bizarre. Yeah. I prefer the Neto comparison, or I was thinking, you know, Doku, that kind of thing. To Dalmat. Doku drives me mad, by the way, just as an aside. I d I, like, if I had to watch him every week, I think I think I'd end up really not liking him. <laughs> he's so direct and, and he's such a handful, but his his final ball is just so painfully it's a, bad. It's, a, it's such a thing in football. If you've got no final ball, I won't say what's the point, but it's like probably the hardest thing in football. That's why players like to but, but, but why should it score be? a goal? But, but, but I can do that. It can't be that hard. <laughs> why, 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 why should it be the hardest thing? Right? I mean, you know, you look at Johnson. He had two occasions in this game where there was one. I think it was the second half where. We worked he had out acres, he had of space. acres, yeah. acres, and this is where I don't want to get into like the Johnson criticism. So I think there's a definitely a player there, and he's got value to us. But that's where, if you're going to be on the cusp of a game, if you're not going to be so involved, and then suddenly we work it out to you, and you've got yards of space, right? Make it count, yes, right. And why should that final ball be so hard in that situation? He had men in the middle. He knows his job. Low and hard. He didn't need men box. in the middle there. He could have taken a couple of touches and had a he shot could, he himself. Had, he had so many options and he ended up doing nothing. And that's a little bit like, that's my biggest criticism of him from the game. We know that he's not a player. It's not just from that game, Gary. We've, we've talked about it last week and he's always a topic of conversation at the moment. He's a good argument on social media. I don't think, and it showed it again on Saturday, I just don't think he has that in him. I don't. It has what in him? That... I don't know what the word is. I'm still searching for that word. I don't know if it's courage, but to... Chutzpah. <laughs> <laughs> Oy vey. Uh, to take on his man and smash one into the bottom corner. I've not seen... What's, what goals has he scored? The same goal sticking up at the back post. Great. And that's Ange ball to a tee. I want my winger to be face up with a fullback in that position take him on and do something and he doesn't do it. That's what I'm saying about Audible. Audible will. Audible would have tried to go around him. Yeah, wh whereas, whereas with somebody like Johnson, you want to work him in behind. But in that, in those two scenarios where he had a bit of room, he ended up not doing anything like enough. And that, that was... That's a concern. That was me. very frustrating. Um, but I do like him. I think he's got a lot of value, a lot of potential. Um, but he does need to step it up a little bit. All right. So we bit like Leicester, fast start, we scored early. Uh, my wife, who I've said on numerous occasions is an Evertonian, and always says to me, if you've not scored your first goal for a club, you'll do it against Everton. Do you remember, <laughs> ooh, it was early 2000s or mid 2000s, we beat them 5-1 or 5-2 on New Year's Day, and Marnie, Ziegler, and... Marnie got two, didn't he? Marnie, I think, got two. Ziegler and Pedro Mendes all scored their first goals for Spurs. She was in the biggest... She doesn't listen anymore, so <laughs> I can say it. She was in like f the vilest mood I've ever seen an, in my life uh, that afternoon. And she said to me before uh, we left, who hasn't scored for Spurs? And I was like, oh, Basuma hasn't Basuma. scored for Spurs. <laughs> 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 and then he pings one in. Are Brilliant. By the way, sorry, go on. Are you, are you saying, sorry, just to, are you saying she used to listen to the show and now she doesn't? Well, she certainly won't listen today after he dumped the him 4-0. Uh, I don't know. Yeah, Gary coming back on. <laughs> 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 I don't know. But what a finish, though, from Bissouma. I mean, where's but before that, that yes. But he scored a couple of those for Brighton, Brighton not yeah. for us. Yeah. Before he scored that, one of four Brighton against us. Did he? 
Yeah, I think it was a cup game. He bent in a lovely goal. Yeah, I'm sure he did. I don't remember oh, that. All right, go on, you talk. I don't think he did. I'm now annoyed I don't have my laptop with me to quickly... Oh, I'll do it on my phone. Not to be confused with Darren Bent, who um, <laughs> didn't... How are you confusing Darren Bent and... When he said he bent one in the top corner. <laughs> he never bent one in the top corner. Great inter- great move before that. The in- uh, Kuliseski went on this sort of Ricky Villa slalom, lump, yeah. slalom run. Yeah. Lovely interchange with Johnson. Perfect set for Bissouma. That's a proper assist for me. 100%. And uh, smashes into the top That's corner. what you can get from Kuliseski. You can't get that from him as much when he's li- when he's stuck out on the wing. I am can, listening. I'm just taking he can a make. Stat. He can make his moves playing inside, I, in, inside, I don't know cutting I pass players. Look. He's got quick feet. He's strong, and he's got the vision to make to play that pass. And I think, I think, as I said, we saw it last season when Madison was injured. And I can't see him getting loads of game time in this kind of second eight, but against weaker teams. Bissouma, uh, K- no, sorry, Kulu, sorry. I, was... I mean, I, I have to say he's going to feel yeah. pretty aggrieved next he week is. if he isn't if he isn't picked. Personally, I can't see him being picked but um certainly not <laughs> certainly not to play alongside madison gary so he's gonna have done well i owe you an apology <laughs> get in was i right yeah it was a good goal as well i don't remember it we beat him three one in the fa cup yeah but he bent one in. i actually think they went one nil up with that goal um well done yeah thanks <laughs> okay yeah. but lovely goal lovely yeah. goal he's now net even so you know he's okay <laughs> I like what did someone say basuma before balloons no goals in <laughs> 55 appearances. <laughs> Basuma after balloons, one goal in one He's appearance. He's just such a Did frustrating... Did you hear what said, though, about him after the game? He said, uh, maybe I'll ban him next week and bring him back the week after. Yeah, that's so that's the point. He's, he's, he's such a it's frustrating kind of put player. To bed, though, isn't it? I think. Yeah, but, you know, it, 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 I do think that we're doing him a disservice by playing him in the six. We want him in the opposition half. He is dangerous. He can get more goals. The way he weaves between players, we saw it in, in pre-season. We saw it a couple of times last year. He went on one of those jinking runs in the box and, and ended up not scoring. I just think he's an eight. And and against a team like Newcastle, mm. and we'll come on to this, I would want to... Andrew won't do it because he's never played him in, in, in that eight role. But I would go for Basuma in the eight. We don't have anyone else to play in the six. Benson Core. Okay, fine. But I'm not sure he's back. Well, then play Archie Gray there. Mm, it's a big ask, and I really like the guy. Uh, I've written here, Son's goal was a lol. It was a lol. I, I loved it. I think Pickford had threatened to do that before, and I'm not sure it was Son's. Johnson possibly chased him down. He did it in the last season as well, when Son nearly caught him. So they had spotted that. It might have been Son who said, I can get this guy or the analysis team, whatever. This was something they spotted. But it was an awful touch from Pickford. And even after the touch, he sort of didn't it's react. Rose Ed. Mm. Rose at that point. Uh, and then... This is what we signed Solanke for, of course, being the best presser. presser. But Son... He looked rapid. 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 Wheels. <laughs> <laughs> Wheels. He was, though, wasn't he? I and mean... He you stumbled, know. and I was like, oh, maybe take a touch. Because it, it wasn't the easiest angle, but no. as Ben Haynes asked him, were you nervous? And he just said, I'm Sonny. I'm Sonny. Yeah, that was such a great answer. <laughs> yeah. That was so it's good. It's not a Sonny answer. It's a great answer, but it sounds so humble. Yeah. But it was a cheeky answer yeah. in that regard. Yeah, ben, it's Sonny. I'm Son. I like to see it. <laughs> like, it, was, it was good. I, I know he, he's getting a bit of pelters at the moment. And I know he, I said he dropped a zero against Leicester. He did, and he will do that. And we've talked about him not being the best, not technically, but on the ball, the hold-up play. He's such a legend, isn't he? I, I think, and I might be wrong here, and I know you haven't got your laptop, so you're going to hate me, but I think Son is a much better player at home than he is away. I was thinking that. I, c- I can do that. I was thinking that. I, I think In terms of num- like basic numbers? Just basic numbers. I and was thinking that. Basic numbers, but also the eye test think performances. Of all, you think of all his good performances and all his eye goals. Eye test performances. Like they well, I mean, feel like they always at home, do He loves to play at the Etihad, that's for sure. Mm. Right? I mean, he loves going yeah, up. Well, they give him space. Yeah, yeah, they, they give, yeah, exactly, yeah. yeah, quite, exactly. Yeah. And all his goals against them come yeah. from like, yeah. having half the pitch yeah. to himself, <laughs> right? Oh, Spurs conceded that goal. We we score that goal against City regularly. Um, yeah, But yeah, outside of that, I do think that for whatever reason it is, he goes missing a little bit away from home. And I I, I might be wrong in that. It's just like, that's my eye test. I've got no stats behind that. I know Johnny's desperately trying to look at it at the moment. Uh, I think you're right. You can tell we plan Um, the show. (laughs) (laughs) it's it's a bank holiday Monday I mean we're all just lucky to have got away one time I've not brought my laptop in the year and a half we've been doing this we're lucky to be here I am lucky to be here I'll go out of the house otherwise I'll be at home with the kids (laughs) (laughs) this is great let's keep chatting but no I I also think that um, he's I think he's 
generally, especially at home, you, you know, we've obviously signed Solanke. He's got injured. I think he's he, he often steps up when you need him to, 100%. especially at home. 100%. And he would have felt there would have been a bit of extra pressure on him this week because obviously with Solanke injured, he's now got to... He's now yeah. got to fill. He's obviously preparing himself for a season out playing on the left with Solanke yeah. through the middle. Last last minute switch, the big money signings out. Up you go, Sonny. You do your you do your yeah. thing. Having not had a very good start to the season, I, th I think people can can level criticism at players. It doesn't mean that we hate them or we don't like them. Or we don't think they've got value. My criticism of Sonny is I don't think you can build up too well through him. And away from home, I think he goes missing quite a lot. Okay, I love the guy with all my heart. Mm. But we're allowed to call things out, right? Of you know, that's the way it goes. Um, and contract runs out. Um, I think we get in a year extension. I think we get to call a year extension. I mean, that's going to happen. Sony, yeah. Um, I have numbers. Go on. Okay, I mean, it's just basic apps and goals. 155 home Premier League appearances, 70 goals. That's a great half, record at home, yeah. What would you... Okay, so 100... Well, I think you know his numbers, but 150... Uh, away Premier League appearances. It's probably higher than you think. 52 goals. Oh, wow. Oh, one in three. So wow. not bad. No, that's a pretty decent return. Yeah. I mean, like I say, it's the eye test. I, I just feel like games like Leicester... It's a he thing was really like, poor against He's either hot or cold, isn't it? I mean, yeah. even the finish, the second finish, was brilliant, brilliant finish. Brilliant finish. Brilliant, brilliant finish. I thought he'd missed the chance, actually. But great finish. I thought he'd missed it as well. When he took it, that's one... That, that first but time. The way, but actually now it's gone in. The way he took it, right foot, he shuffle it to the doing. left, bang. It was that, that was a Ben Armson. You yeah. know, that, that is proper. He knew what he yeah. was doing. Yeah. And when he's on it, he's really on it. And up front, he, he, he chased, he harried. But then, you know, up front, you're not looking to build through him. You're looking for him to just sort of finish something uh, off. I'm starting to get Harry Kane vibes. When I saw him interviewed, and I, was he 32 now? And I looked at his contract status. Yes, we're probably going to get another one he'll probably get a new contract so we, you know we've gone for another three four years it's still a, not his peak but he will go on but i was like i'm really gonna miss you when you're gone mate oh <laughs> i think i'll miss him um controversially oh, I, I think, think i miss him so. more than i miss kane i miss uh, him i miss him now like the thought <laughs> just fight you'll see him in six days right okay I think <laughs> the, the, the problem is right think about it like this harry kane from three years before he left we always sort of knew that he wanted out and he was gonna leave and he always had that kind of vibe about him Whereas Son has always been like, oh, I, I want to be here, I want to stay here. And, and I, I just feel like it's, if it was announced at the end of the season that Son's going, I'd be heartbroken. Yeah. I'd be really upset. Yeah. Like That would be devastating. Um, I'd like to see Son, and, and some, I, I mentioned this to somebody, somebody this week, and they said, oh, this is all sort of, I don't know what you said, but nonsense type of thing. I think Son should be club captain. I don't know that he should be the captain on the pitch. But who would be? And I think Son for the next three or four years should be the club ambassador. Yeah, yeah. As well who as would you have as captain on the Romero. pitch? Hundred percent Romero. He's he's worn the armband well though since since he was given that role. He's really sharpened his, oh, he's been, he's his been, act up. But he who Romero? Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. I thought you were saying Son had yeah. worn the armband. No, well. Romero. You know his disciplinary record is chalk and cheese. From yeah, that before, one blemish basically. where you know Romero wins the ball but catches the man, gets sent off, and we all lay but into him. Then. But, you know, Romero's also a guy that can pull the hair of Cucurella and it's national news for six months, whereas Joel Linton can, you know, do something that you'd get sent off for in rugby. And uh, and, and nobody said a word, really, comparatively, because those are the statues of Are we starting the Gary complaint hour now? Or? Uh, this is no, another no, one. I haven't got time. Let me tell you something. Before we come <laughs> on to Newcastle, right, there's two things that happen in the space of two minutes that deeply impact this game on the weekend. One... They should have been losing 2-1, which puts big, big pressure on them for the weekend. They're, uh, they're under a lot of pressure if they lose that game. Two, a minute later, Joel Linton literally clotheslines the keeper. It's a sending off all day long. He's been booked. So there will be no retrospective action. So he's available. And he's a big player for them. They've got two massive slices of luck. And I only come on to that because if it had been Romero that had done that, like they'd be calling for a six-month ban. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's true. Before we talk about Newcastle, I want to mention big shout out to the centre back partnership, both of them stepping up with goals. And finally, mm. we score from. Well, no, Van der Ven didn't score. Sorry, the way he stepped up to yeah, set yeah, up yeah. that goal. Sorry, uh, involved in the goals, and uh, we we finally score from a corner. You know, he wanted a goal. It was his hundredth performance for the club, and you can see he had a chance in the first half. But he 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 wanted to get on the score sheet, mm. and he attacked that. Good header. header. It was a great ball in. Pickford was rooted. He should have come out. 
Uh, great header. Really put his... Nah, I don't know, so in six the yard box. There. I thought it was a great ball in from Madison. Um, it was, but it's header. six yard box. We have mm. a go at our goalkeeper for not coming. He should have come. Just on that, a great header. Just before that, just before half time, we weathered a storm. Everton did that thing where they turn us around, so I couldn't see really what was going down the other end. Yeah, uh, they, uh, they always do. It's Deitch's thing. Well done, mate. <laughs> mm. Really worked. Um... Your man last week who came on, uh, he was a great guest, the Everton guy. He, I thought he, he, he spoke really, really well. And he said, if we go goal down, we, we may as well go home. Um, he said, but if we go goal up, then, you know, we, we, we've got a chance. And, and he called it like absolutely spot on. Yeah. They um, were the pits. The pits. I know they had problems with injuries. doesn't matter. They had Lindstrom, I think, is a good player. And Dye, I think, is a decent player on the bench. Branthwaite. No, but out, but they had players on the bench that would, oh, right. in, for me, would improve their team. But it's the way Deitch plays. They were one of the worst teams I've ever seen. Just quickly on the on the fourth goal, incredible from Van der Ven. Um, the blokes just uh, Rolls Royce. Uh, what have we learned then? We've played. New, we've got four points when we should have six. I know football doesn't work like that, but we've wasted. We said last week we've wasted for me a, a, a fixture away to Leicester. We've played against two teams who don't want the ball. And we'll play plenty of teams who don't want the ball, but when they do get it, Brentford, Bournemouth, those sorts of teams, Brighton, well, uh, or Brighton do want the ball, we, but, but teams who will actually get, when they get the ball, yeah. something will happen, like a Brentford, like a Bournemouth. The two teams we've played, even when they've had the ball, have done nothing. What have we learned? Well, have we actually learned anything? On that basis, nothing, but that's just based on who we've played. <laughs> I mean, what can you do yeah, about so that? Speak to the fixture computer. <laughs> no, but there's been some sort of... I walked away from Saturday. Brilliant. We won 4-0. I wasn't euphoric because Everton were absolutely terrible. And obviously, there's the usual stuff on social media. Why aren't you ecstatic? Not me personally. I've seen people <laughs> arguing with each other. I've not said a word. Why aren't For you once? ecstatic? We've just won 4-0. And it's like, let's just wait and see. We've got two of our notoriously toughest games coming up. Newcastle and Arsenal. I don't feel like I've learned anything yet. I'm very happy we've won 4 0. I'm very ha- It was a very good performance. You have to still put these teams away and we bash someone 4 0. For me, the next two games will tell us a lot more I than what we've just seen. So it's hard to assess what we've learned by way of how we're going to play and how we're going to perform. You're right when you've played Leicester and Newcastle. We haven't Everton. conceded a goal in the break, we haven't conceded a set piece. The only goal we have conceded. You know, I, I felt last season the three goals we conceded on the break, set pieces or brain farts from players, right? And that and, and is that there third, anything else? And, and that third one, we sort of, yeah, sometimes a the team yeah. can like open you up. Like City will score goals, Arsenal will score goals, Liverpool. You know, do you know what I mean? Like, there's always going to be a mistake somewhere, but there, there are mistakes and there are mistakes. Yeah, Romero walking off Vardy, that's a big mistake. Okay? Yeah. Um, but what I think we've learned is there's a lot of talk about the impactfulness of the transfer window. And we've only signed one player that impacts the first team. And this, I think, is what we have learned. The transfer window, to me, is increasingly looking better and better all the time. But because, not, yeah, because, I, because it's be, not true that we've only signed one player who impacts the first team. We saw it on... Sa- on one starter. Let's right. say one starter. Okay. okay, well, we've only signed one starter. But let's take a look at it. Okay, you've got Basuma out for the first game. Arguably... Did he need to start if he was available? You've got Benson Core out for the second game. You've got Solanke out. You know, and it's not even just the players that are out and we've covered for. Solanke being out was annoying, but you've got Richardson or Son. So you're like, okay. What what I think I see here right now is I don't think this first 11 is as good as the peak Poch team. It's not. No way. Okay. But I think this squad is infinitely stronger. Yep. And I think this is one of the strongest squads we've seen. And when that you Poch team it, never had any, barely had never any had any squad. And that was, and, but that Poch, that Poch's downfall was exactly that: is yeah. that he he was saying, "I want to sign players that are going to be better than those players I already have in the first team," and that was very very hard to do. But what we've done here is signing the likes of Archie Gray and Birdfall. Okay, they could come in and be first team players, but if they're not straight away they are still going to impact the minutes in the first team better than a Hoiberg or which, this or that, which a is Celso what, or the other. You know what I mean? So Ali we, Tweedell said Europe is so important to us this year, so those guys get minutes as well. Sure. But the point I'm making is, if under Poch, right, you had an Archie Gray or a Bergville or a Jed Spence, suddenly that squad isn't looking so threadbare and you've still got the talent coming through so that the drop-off isn't as much. So what we're learning, I think, and then you see Odeberg coming in, right? Another young kid, but clearly very talented. 
like so what we're actually seeing what i've learned in the first two games is this is probably the deepest squad that i have seen a tottenham yeah. at, at tottenham under potch i remember saying to someone i don't think we can improve this first team and he still calls me out on it today, saying, you don't know what you're talking about. You can always improve your first team. Obviously, we could have gone and signed. You can't, but but, but uh, it was in the, the stats. That's the thing about the, what you're saying mm. is, and actually that was the downfall, is that you don't necessarily need to sign someone who's going to come straight in, but you can sign someone who may end up yeah. forcing his way in. But there, is, I, there is belief right now we could improve we could, our yeah, first team. You could, you could, you, 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 you could get a you could six. Always. I don't think you can improve the back line very much. You could get a six right now. I think Dom Solanke is as good a striker as we could have hoped and actually and think he's he's an the improvement. and I think he's the ideal profile yep. for yep. us. I think we can improve on Johnson and Son is a question mark on the left. I'm sorry, but it just is. In certain games, like, you know. We can't play him down the middle, so where are we playing him now? <sighs> nah, he's always well, on the left. Son's going to be in the team, right? Yeah. But, you know, there are areas you can improve, but, but the point I'm making is I think we're in a position now with this squad where if it is like, oh, so-and-so is unavailable for this game, it's annoying, but actually we've got somebody else to come into that place. So you know, such a drop Spence off. came on mm. for um, for uh, uh, um, Udogi towards the end of the game, and I can't remember exactly what he did, but he did something excellent. Mm. He's a good he footballer. Did something excellent, He's right? A very good footballer. Yeah, very. Good. You've got Jagushin on the bench, looking to to, to to get game time. So what we have learned is that this squad, genuinely, I think, is stronger than any squad Poch ever had, even if the first eleven isn't as good a first 11 as what Poch had. So what's going to take us further, you know, in, 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 in terms of your mate saying, you saying you can't be get, get, get better than that first 11, it's in the stats. We went 70 odd games and we were five points clear of anybody else. We just didn't win a league in that time, <laughs> unfortunately. <laughs> you know, but, but that stat is there. You could probably pull it up on your phone. At that league table that everybody shows, 75 odd games, we're five points clear of the next team. So that shows that that first team was exceptional. But why didn't we win a league? because of the drop-off when somebody fell out, right? But what we're seeing, I think, with this Tottenham squad and what we've seen in these first two games with the players coming in, I think there's been five subs in both games and that's going to be needed. Because you it's going to be- Six a subs didn't win against Leicester because they had a concussion. It, it, it's oh. going to be a, a really long, hard season. Yep. But when the subs are made, yep. it's not like oh. we're weakening yeah. the yeah. team. With respect, your Ollie Skip's not coming on or Correct. Dane Scarlett with, again, all Correct. With respect. Yeah, you know, yeah. Hoiberg, where you're like- Brian I mean, Hill. Uh, yeah, Brian Jimmy, Hill, right, Jimmy exactly. Hill. <laughs> so it has been a massively good window with a lot of the Deadwood out yeah. and a lot coming in that's replacing them that is challenging or could be first team players. Which and when you're and when you're making those subs, there isn't that drop off. Yeah. And when there's that injury, there isn't such a notable yeah, Which is why I don't, and people have said the Werner signing strange. I don't mind it because it just gives us numbers and there's not massive drop off. There will be injuries. The way Ange likes to play, we've got plenty of games with Europe as well. I mean, we've got two extra games in Europe. We and might even have a cup run this time. We might time. even have a cup run. We're going to have to play. We're going to be looking at, what, 50, 60 games, basically. And last year was 41? 41. I'm actually a big fan so of Werner. Like, uh, I get stick for it. I think Werner's numbers are always very good when he plays, and I think he's really direct, and he's got to be horrible to play against for a fullback. If he's coming on after 70 minutes... He was just awful not, against just Leicester. Not, yeah, why he put him on the right. The right. Yeah. Um, yeah. But why I think it is a strange signing now is when you look at the composition of the squad and the list that we can present for Europe with Werner in there, it does mean, assuming that we sign a left-back or left-centre-back, because that's the one area that I could see we actually have a weakness in terms of cover, um, assuming that you want Spence on the right, not on the left. But, you know, um, that's the one area that we, we could have a weakness. Um, it means that Werner or Davies have to sit out the European squad. So that's where Werner becomes a bit of a funny one. Is that right? Yeah. But I don't think we'll sign well, anyone now. Werner's not... Don't, I can't see either of those two sitting out of the Europeans. No, nor no, can I, uh, because you'd want them in the early phases of Europe anyway. They're, they're the I, kind I of can't see signing anyone else now. I don't think that's the one area of the squad that, that needs strengthening. I, I could I could tolerate us not signing a six, not signing another winger, whatever it would be. But if we don't sign a left centre back or left back, that would be a concern, particularly a left back, probably more so than a left centre back, because I think Davies or Dragushin could step into there. Yeah, you don't want to be moving Mickey van der Ven out to left back, for example. Um, so I think we do need well, to with those wheels. Side. I'd be happy. Friend of the show, Oli Spiro, wants van der Ven to play left back against Newcastle. Not that's a bad shout against someone like Anthony Gordon. Segue. But Good segue, huh? Segue. huh? <laughs> Should we talk to a Newcastle fan, a friend of the show? Friend of the show. Andy Sixsmith. Let's get him on. Let's do it now.
Delighted to be joined once again by Andy Sixsmith, Premier League's... Oh, no, start again. <laughs> Why are you laughing? Because I was better at this. <laughs> <laughs> you, did, you, did, you didn't have a guest. <laughs> Delighted to be joined once again by Andy Sixsmith, the Premier League's North East reporter. Andy, thanks so much for joining us. No worries, guys. Thank you very, very much for having me again. I'm surprised you've got me back like <laughs> after that last time and after the last two years of Tottenham Newcastle. I know, we'll come to that. We will come to that. You can now that. be friend of the show, though, so... Yeah, well, it depends what happens here. <laughs> yeah, no, it depends what happens this weekend, I yeah. suppose. But um, so A similar start uh, to Tottenham, really. Newcastle, one win, one draw. You beat the promoted team, uh, Drew at Bournemouth. How have you seen the start on the pitch? Yeah, it's been interesting, hasn't it? I mean, I think there was a lot of I mean, hopes are high anyway amongst any fan base ahead of the start of the new season because it's fresh, it's brand new. But I think up here in Newcastle, we were very, very, very hopeful that Newcastle hit the ground running. They would have that intensity that is our identity these days under Eddie Howe that we've seen over the last two, two and a half years. Also in dispatches, obviously. It hasn't quite clicked yet for Newcastle. I mean, that opening day win over Southampton. I thought Southampton were absolutely excellent. I felt very, very sorry for them. I spoke to Adam Armstrong after the game and he, he was he was gutted, really. I mean, obviously, they played against 10 men for, for what, just over an hour after Fabian Scher's sending off. Uh, less said about that one, the better. But Newcastle didn't quite click yet. We did really, really well to grind out that win. Uh, I think Eddie referred to it as just having that kind of devilment back in the side again that we didn't really see last season, but we certainly saw in his first full season at the club. But it just didn't click in terms of an attacking sense. It's difficult to read too much into that when you're playing with 10 men. But then obviously yesterday uh, against Bournemouth at the weekend, it's one of our bogey grounds. It's a vitality. Yeah, yeah. Anyhow, still hasn't beaten Bournemouth, his old side. Uh, and you can see why Bournemouth play a very, very good style of football. But again, it just wasn't there for Newcastle. That bite, that intensity, that high press, that aggression that you associate with Eddie Howe's Newcastle United side. It just wasn't there. You saw it in dispatches, but it wasn't there consistently. And I, I thought we were, we were quite fortunate to get away with a point from Bournemouth at the weekend. Uh, did very, very well to grind out a point. VAR accepting, obviously, it could have been a lot worse. Uh, but as far as I'm concerned, yeah, in terms of the start of the season, speaking to a few of the fans, they, they've described it as a little bit sluggish, the performance is not quite there. And you look back at pre-season, you think of those commercial trips, the trip to Australia at the end of last season, the trip out to Japan, obviously, the, you know, plenty of players at the Euros, but like many, many Premier League teams, that's been the case. And you just wonder whether Eddie's had enough players on their grass at the right time. And I just wonder whether that's bleeding into the season. So points-wise, not a bad return. Four points from two games, especially that, you know, bogey ground like the vitality that I mentioned. Uh, but in terms of performance levels, certainly not hitting our straps as of yet. Uh, but hopefully that comes against you guys this weekend because... We like playing Tottenham yeah. at St. James, don't yeah. we? Andy, what, what, I mean, aside from, from that, we will come on to that. But what is the general yeah. mood around Newcastle? Because it, it feels, from an outsider looking in, kind of mm. odd. There was all this euphoria when the club was acquired. A couple of big yeah. name signings came in. Then PSR really started to tighten. Yeah. And the spending hasn't been there. And Amanda Stovall is now gone. What, what is yeah. going on? What's the feeling exactly? I think a restructuring, I think we were always going to reach this point in this new era, this project at Newcastle United, where things would start to just try and move up a little notch. And I think that's been the case with Amanda and Merdad leaving. Uh, there was always, Amanda and Merdad have been absolute stalwarts, heroes up here in Newcastle. They're regarded as, you know, these people who made that takeover happen, essentially, and they're always going to be welcome in the city. They did wonders for the men's team, wonders for the women's team. But I think the ownership model here at Newcastle United have decided to move the club up to that next stage. Paul Mitchell's obviously come in as sporting director, which I think is a, an absolutely tremendous appointment, obviously, with all of us saga surrounding Dan Ashworth. So I think in terms of the structure and Amanda and Murdad leaving, I think that was always going to happen at some point. Okay. In terms of the mood around the club, yeah, it's those three little letters that mm. we don't particularly like up here in Newcastle. I'm certain a lot of clubs across the Premier League and across the world as well, certainly don't like. And that, that is PSR. There's no secret in the fact that Newcastle have been affected by that in terms of, well, in equal amounts to, to many other clubs. We didn't want to sell uh, Elliot Anderson to Nottingham Forest. Yacouba Minter obviously went off to Brighton. They had to be sold. There was that kind of fire sale across the course of a weekend 
uh, back in July, wasn't it? Well, late, early July, uh, where that had to happen. That didn't sit well with supporters. I can tell you right now that didn't sit well with Eddie Howe. Uh, I've spoken with Eddie on and off camera, press conferences and outside. And, you know, Eddie's as frustrated as anyone else. The fact that he's having to sell some really good young talent at Newcastle United, yet still had these constraints when it comes down to signing new players. There's, of course, been the Mark Gahey <laughs> saga. I think we can call it as it's had more parts than the Star Wars saga <laughs> by now. Um, I, my gut feeling is that Mark Gahey will end up a Newcastle United player. Even though player. he made club captain by Palace, you didn't think that was a, a last... Draw I think it's him. a last-ditch attempt, but I, I, I just wonder whether... Newcastle would have put this amount of effort into a player to try and sign them. Reports suggest that we've gone back with four different bids. Um, I don't think Newcastle and the ruthlessness that surrounds our hierarchy would have gone back in four times for a player if they weren't being given assurances or, you know, a little bit of a come on yeah. that Newcastle would have been able to get the player. Fantastic signing if Newcastle can get him over the line. It's a big week ahead, but it's not the only signing Newcastle need. There's a lot of fans out there that are talking, you know, we need a right winger. In there as well. We need to strengthen the squad just a little touch. But then naturally injuries are going to be returning. Last season was a nightmare in terms of injuries at mm. Newcastle United. So yeah, going back to your earlier question, in terms of a mood, it's a really interesting one on time. So I think frustration's there. And so early on in the season, it's ridiculous. You're two games in, but the way that the transfer window has gone, the way that the start of the season has gone, there is a little bit of frustration on time side. But obviously, football can change very, very quickly. A couple of signings in this week, potentially Mark Gay, potentially one other as well, will change the mood on time side. So home to Tottenham. Obviously. Yes, exactly. <laughs> Having Tottenham at home always changes the mood on time side. So we shall see on that front. But look, it's really early in the season. The transfer window hasn't quite gone as it is. I think there's a, there's a tendency, guys, amongst uh, people outside of Newcastle to kind of look in and say, well, hang on a minute, the takeover was you know, X amount of months and years ago now. Why haven't Newcastle kicked on? Why haven't Newcastle done this? Has the early kind of takeover feeling bubble burst? It was asked of the great Alan Shearer of the weekend on Five Live. And Alan, you know, fair enough said, no, we still feel like that feeling is good. There's still that bounce from the takeover. But yeah. there's this element of kind of pushing the club on now this season. So, be very, very interesting season ahead, obviously, with the lack of Europe. And uh, yeah, it's been a, a decent enough start, but just signs that that frustration is a little bit there ahead of Tottenham this weekend. Mm. We obviously touched on the game this weekend. We don't have a very good record at Newcastle. Johnny, I'm sure, will Ooh. delight us with all the stats. <laughs> it's bad. <laughs> the record on it. It, it. But is Tonali going to be back? Is that happening this weekend or is that in the pipeline? H how do you see the game going? Obviously, question marks really around the Newcastle defence with or without if Gay happens this week or not yeah absolutely I mean it's not ideal obviously we're losing Sven Botman Jamal Lascelles to long term injuries last season then Fabi getting sent off on the opening day of the season leaves Dan Byrne and Emil Kraft I mean I know that Newcastle fans might look at that and fans of other clubs might look at that and go well that's a real real weakness look Dan Byrne and Emil Kraft have never ever let Newcastle United down uh, Dan obviously is a Geordie through and through Emil has been a tremendous tremendous player for Newcastle not you know a, a world class player I'm sure it is own admission but the man gives his all every single time he appears he's a much better player than a lot of people give him credit for so you know, defensively, I, I think we'll be okay in that sense. The Tenali, <laughs> the Tenali situation, uh, Sandra will be eligible to play in the uh, Carabao Cup this week against Nottingham Forest. There are beliefs that he will get certainly minutes there. I highly doubt he will start. Uh, I asked Eddie about it in the first press conference of the season a couple of weeks ago, and he rightly said, you know, he hasn't had those game minutes in his legs. He's been allowed to train, obviously, with the first team. But he hasn't had the game minutes in his legs. And especially in a league as intense and as aggressive as the Premier League too, there is a feeling that Sandro is just going to be eased back in after what has been not just a, a very, very difficult year for him physically, naturally with not being able to play, yeah. but a difficult year for him mentally. Because, you know, not to sound biased or anything, and yes, there have been those, you know, those issues that the betting allegations and betting allegations prove, but let's not get away from it. This is this is a man with an illness at the end of the day, an addiction. And he needed to be tr treated right. He's been treated well by the club. And there's all indications that Sandro is in the right headspace. He's certainly in terms of the right fitness, in terms of the training ground, he is ready to play. 
but I would highly doubt that Eddie will throw him straight back into the fire yeah. uh, against Nottingham Forest and against Tottenham at St. James's Park. I think you'd likely to see a midfielder, Bruno Joe Linton, and either Joe Willock or Sean Longstaff with Sandro on the bench. But just having a fantastic player like Sandro Tonali back, <laughs> I swore I'd never use this cliche, but it is like having a new signing <laughs> back because we haven't yeah. seen him on tight side in, in a year or so. He looked very, very good in glimpses in his early stages in his Newcastle United career. Few would forget his debut against Aston Villa, uh, where he scored and was quite magnificent. So it'd be really, really good to have him back, but he certainly won't be firing, I imagine, for the visit of Tottenham Hotspur and, and that visit down to uh, down to the city ground for Nottingham Forest in midweek. So, yeah, it'd be good to have Sandro back. Defensively, I think we're a lot better than what people give us credit for. But, sure, if you're going to pluck the likes of Sven Botman, Jamal Lascelles, Fabian Scherer out of your defence... It's always going to be a little bit more of a struggle, but uh, yeah, we like having our backs against the wall up here on Tyneside, so uh, it was at the start of the season. Well, we've joked about our record there, it's terrible, but a lot of teams yeah. go there and get a hiding. It feels to yeah. me, Andy, that Newcastle, after the sort of quiet start, they need a big game, let it be Tottenham, Arsenal, whoever it would be coming this yeah. week, and they sort of need that uh, to get the season lift off. So come on, what's your prediction uh, for the weekend? Yeah, I mean... <laughs> I really, really want to come on here, folks, and say, uh, you know, what was it, six, two years ago, four last year? Oh, so it's yeah. half each, so that... take two off each time, not quite, so it's two. <laughs> <laughs> so two, two, one, I would take straight away. Um, <laughs> no, I was going to say round it up to 15 and we'll, we'll hit five this year. Um, <laughs> and you know what? It, it's a strange thing with you guys, the way that you play. It does play into Newcastle's mm, hands, absolutely. the high line, the Ange ball. It plays into Newcastle's hands if Newcastle are on their game. Yeah. And that is the big if. If Newcastle's press is right, if Newcastle's aggression is right, if we're on the front foot from the first minute. And I haven't seen that, of course, so far this season. You guys are playing some nice stuff. Obviously, Everton at the week. I mean, <laughs> what I said about Everton, the better in terms of what they're like. I saw some highlights from the game. I thought you guys look very, very good uh, in certain ways. But you've also looked very, very good in games leading up to playing Newcastle at St. James's Park before. So I genuinely think Newcastle will be walking out at St. James's Park after Sunday with a win. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't think it's going to be the hidings that we've handed out to you guys in, in the last two years, more certainly. I think Ange Postecoglou will have certainly learned from those two games at St. James's Park uh, from watching them back. Obviously, you know, wasn't responsible for the one two years ago, but certainly last year. Um, I think it's going to be a very, very much closer encounter. I'm very, very intrigued to see Alex Cizak up against Mickey van der Ven after last season mm -hmm. as well, because I don't know if you guys know, but Mickey became the subject of a bit of a meme up here on Tyneside after that still image of him uh, with his face in the St. James's Park turf, bless him, after being turned inside out by Alex. Uh, tremendous defender, by the way. Just, just had one, one of those days. off days. Yeah, yeah. yeah, one of those days. And a lovely, lovely bloke as well. I've spoken to him a couple of times. What a tremendous bloke he is. So prediction-wise, yeah, I think Newcastle, are, I, I think you're right. I think we need a win for a really, really big lift-off at Newcastle this season. I think it will come against Tottenham Hotspur, but it certainly won't come as easily as it has done in the previous seasons. Andy, as I always say to our guests, good luck, but I don't really mean it. Um, <laughs> and it's been good to talk to you and we'll get you on before we play you at home for once and see what happens with that. Yeah, I'm sure you will. And I'm sure the tone of the conversation will be entirely different knowing our away form. <laughs> uh, really appreciate it, Andy. Thank you so much. Cheers, Andy. No worries. Cheers, guys. Yeah, yeah, Best yeah, of luck with no luck whatsoever. <laughs> Cheers. Thanks, Andy, mate. <laughs> What a contrast to the Everton bloke last week, <laughs> who was like, you're going to wallop us, to Andy Sixsmith, who cannot wait for We're us to turn you. up. Did, yeah, did you, did you not tell him uh, that's not what you're supposed to say? <laughs> <laughs> uh, listen, it's a, just an awful place for us to go more often than not. Uh, you asked what have we learned, and coming up to Newcastle, I don't, fa I don't fancy us to win. No. But I don't think that's such a bad thing in the sense that going Newcastle have made St. James is certainly less so last season. You're, you're the stats man, you'll tell me. But haven't but got my laptop. Told under you Eddie that. Howe, they've they've made that stadium much harder to go to. It's always been hard. It's always, it's always been, been hard. hard. It dropped but, off a but bit. The the way they set up and defensively and um, you know, the way that they really make it difficult. Best fans the way, in the world, mate. And talk best about fans that. in the world, but the energy that they now play with under Eddie Howe, it's it's made it difficult. But they had injuries against us last year, they've got injuries again this year. It seems to make no difference. Well, I was gonna say, I think their injuries at centre back 
shares. I not... think they had problems at centre back last year. They did, and still bashed us. <laughs> yeah, they did. Still walloped us. I think last year was just a, a, a bit of a, I would say, an anomaly. Except that people go, well, they did it the year before, but that was a very different time with uh, Stellini. Oh, they, yeah, and, I forget that game. Forget uh, yeah, it. Yeah, that, that was an absolute joke. I, I, that game to me just doesn't even count. I think four we, nil. Off, it was four we nil. We could have played the year. dog and duck that game and lost six <laughs> two. Um, Good side, the dog and duck. Um, but St. James has always been a tough game, you know, and it, as well, it, it's particularly hard. You throw into things like, you know, I think it's one thirty kickoff um, or, or 2 o'clock or whatever. There's train strikes, so the Spurs fans have to drive up. It's a long old journey. It's a, it's a hard place for Tottenham fans to get to at that horrible time to get there. I always see that stadium on TV. It annoys me, that shadow that comes across the pitch <laughs> from the stand. Like you, it's yeah. just everything about it is is. I, I always sort of think to myself, it must be weird to play on that pitch with that weird shadow that goes across from that stand. Like the, the '86 World Cup, um, one for the kids. Um, can I just tell you their sorry, defense against born. the defense against <laughs> us? They had Dubravka in goal, Jacob Murphy at right back, Kraft, Cher, and Burn. Uh, you know, we had but Benton Kerr and Basuma. We had a four-two-three-one with Benton Kerr and Basuma. Mm. I feel like no Cher and no Botman. Having and Trippier doesn't look like well he hasn't been picked has he so you'd assume that he's not going to play. I don't think I just don't think they're as strong. Obviously they're not as strong, but I don't think they're as well well drilled and well oiled. Look, you know we they had Kelly Craft Livermento and Dan Byrne yesterday. Kelly Craft Livermento is good. Livermento is good. Yeah, they're <laughs> all good, but uh, I think that's 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 a defence. And what they have in front, concerned. Joel Linton and Bruno. Yeah, yeah, they're good. They're solid in front of that. I didn't see the game. What was the... F and they had... Joel Linton, Bruno... Joel Linton, Longstaff, and Bruno, and then they've got Gordon, Gordon Isak, Isak, and Jacob Murphy. Yeah, no, I don't good think side. Jacob Murphy started yesterday. Uh, he did start yesterday. Oh, did he? Yeah. And then, obviously, you know, they've got Barnes and Joe Willock. John Barnes. John Barnes. Bloody they're, a good, they're a good squad, but I just think that starting defensive, it's that four that play on Sunday. We say it against teams, first 20 minutes. We go there and quieten them I can't remember when they scored against us in the 4 0, but the 6 we were done by. <laughs> that oh, doesn't count. Right that game minute. is that, forget it. <laughs> right, yeah. yeah, that was Hugo Lloris's last, last, uh, last performance for the club, and he threw two into the net and came off <laughs> at half time and said, I'm, I'm done. <laughs> um, and he was. Um, it, was a, it was a shame for him to go that way. But yeah. I think the team selection is going to be really interesting in the aftermath of having seen the team this week. Um, number one, you know, Solanke's fit, he plays. But is he going to be fit? The, 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 he, Ange said like he will either be fit for Newcastle or he'd definitely be fit after the international yeah, break okay. but he, he had a decent chance of being, of being I fit I think we need Newcastle. him on Sunday I think we desperately need him on Sunday but well, we need him all season that's why we signed no, him no but there are games where you can go it's fine I think the things that I, I, I would like to see regardless of the Kulisovsky or not the things I definitely want to not see I don't want to see Saar on the team and again this isn't Saar hate I just don't think he's suited to that game um, I, I think agree. we need to retain the ball and he isn't the guy for that. So um, who plays instead of him? And I don't want to see Johnson starting. And again, this isn't Johnson hate. I want to see him coming off after 70 minutes. So who are you playing? And going at fullback. No well, one left. Uh, well, no, the, well, <laughs> well, 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 there is. I mean, you know, you, you've got Benson Kaur and Basuma. And I think uh, personally, I would, be, I would, like I say, I don't think he'd do it, but I'd have Benson Kaur, I'd have Benson Kaur in the six and Basuma in the eight. I think you've got two players there that are press resistant can hold the ball. I think Basuma in the eight really would well, cause we just, problems. Well, we played against them last year with those two. And got right, yeah, okay, nice. fine. La last season was uh, But a they bit still both game. might play, but the other way around. Yeah. And like, then with Madison, so you'd and, have and Basuma, Benton, Kerr. Yeah, Madison. and then I would actually have Odebert or Kulisevsky on the right, probably Odebert, um, Son on the left, and Solanke up front is, is, is the way that I would go with it. Would you play Richie if Solanke wasn't fit? If Solanke isn't fit, I would have... Oh, such a difficult one. No, definitely I, not. I'd probably go Son up front, and then you get, and then you've got more options to get Odebert plus plus another ball player. I just think we need players who are comfortable on the ball under pressure. Yeah, I see Solanke as that. I don't see Rich as that. Um, and, and I think it's really important that we're not getting the ball nicked off us. We're not letting them break on us. So we just need to control the ball as much as possible. Okay, let's do some predictions. I'd love to have seen Odebert up against Dan Byrne, but Dan Byrne will be at centre-back. But if he was at left-back... So they had Livermento at left-back? Yeah. Go on then, prediction, Jake Robson. I'm going to say two all. Oh, that was going to be mine. <laughs> well, thank you. You can have it. Two all. 
Um, I actually think we're going to go there and win. When you were just talking, I had this, <laughs> I had this wave of us winning, and I don't get that very often. Uh, was, it, was it coursing through you? <laughs> and then I was like, oh, no, I can just see Isak scoring. And look, on. it's one of them. Anything could happen. Yeah. You wouldn't be surprised if we came away with a 3 or 4 nil bashing, right? You wouldn't be surprised with the draw. You wouldn't be surprised if we were 2-1 <laughs> up in the 80th minute and drew two all or lost 3-2. Any, It's one of them games. Anything can happen, but I just... Anything can happen. There's no easy games. It's the best league in the world. <laughs> uh, but, Do you but, work for the Premier League, mate? Uh, <laughs> no, but particularly, like, uh, uh, we're at Newcastle. It's a tough game, yeah. right? It's one, of the hard, it's one of your hardest games of the season, but I just think that we will go there and beat them this season. I don't know what the score will be. I need a score or I can't let you leave the building. Interestingly enough, you say about uh, Odebert playing right. It, I'm just looking here. He's played uh, in his professional career, or at least in his league career, he's played almost as many games on the right as he has on the left. Yeah. Uh, a Burnley fan think... said he wasn't as good on the right. Right. No, he yeah, does look... He, he, you can see why. Like the, the way he took the ball out of the air on his left foot in his first touch... I, his right foot, I don't think, is, is probably going to be as strong. But he's still a player that, when he's got the ball at his feet, he's, he's going to probably yeah, not cough Gary, up possession. stop skirting around the fact that he's <laughs> going for you. 3-1. Us. All right, you've gone draw win. I, I have this funny feeling we're going to win, but it wouldn't be me if I didn't sit here and be pessimistic. So I'm going to go 2-1 Newcastle, but that's a po that's an improvement, right? On what? <laughs> what On the last two four seasons. 4-0 and 6-1. Very good. That is uh, Gallo's humour. Yeah. All right, gentlemen. We'll be back next week. We don't have a game to preview We've next week. We've got to go because Gary's got somewhere to be. I'm doing uh, a barbecue today. He's doing a barbecue. Yeah, well, so what are you doing for the rest of this well, bank holiday? I want to know what, what's on the barbecue. Oh, uh, burgers, sausages, chicken, some fish probably. All I round to Gary's. Right. Co kosher? No. <laughs> oh, well, it's, it's Monday, I suppose. So. <laughs> what are you talking about? <laughs> uh, get the cheeseburgers out. What are you doing? I'm going on a boat. Where? Go boat. Where's that? Paddington. Oh, uh, what's the, how does that work? Just go on a boat and you steer it around Camden Lock sort of thing. Take a picnic? You can. Pick up some uh, barbecue <laughs> on the way. <laughs> you? Uh, sounds like, from earlier, it sounded like you were trying to get a lift home. I'll take a lift home, yeah. I'm not taking you home. You uh, live like West London. I'm going home, yeah, I'm going home. Looking after the little one. <laughs> okay. Yeah. We digress. No boats, lot. no barbecues for me. <laughs> Um, all right, gentlemen, we will be back next week to dissect whatever happens at St. James's Park. <laughs> Who knows? Who knows? Uh, oh, th thank you very much for joining us to get the old, the old band back together. It was fun, wasn't it? Nice. You need to get that Jake Sanders back on. <laughs> Decent, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> all right, gentlemen, thank you very much, and we will see you next week. And up the Spurs.